Hello everybody, back here again for our vlog a day, and today it's Wednesday the 29th, and today was a lovely, beautiful day to be alive. Got this morning, fairly decent time frame, the wife got off to work, uh, everything went smooth there. Had no dogs at the house today, which was super, super weird for me, because I rarely ever don't have dogs. The only time I don't have dogs, like, I'm either getting back from a cruise, or heading down on a cruise, or we're taking off the mountains. Like, it's really weird to have house stop dogs. So, yeah, I got it this morning, though. No dogs around, and no dogs coming today, which is insanely rare for me. So, I decided today I was going to run out to do a little run around and stuff that didn't have to rush back the house when the dog's here. So decided today I was gonna head out to the um, flea market slash farmer's market that they have at Volusia County Fairgrounds once a week, every Wednesday. <clears throat> I used to go out there a lot. I'd stop on the way back from my vending route. I'd run my vending route on Wednesday. I'd stop in there on Wednesday and buy my wife a few orchids on a regular basis because there was a orchid dealer out there who had really good pricing. So I was like, cool, no big deal. So. Headed out there this time, and the lady I used to buy from all the time has changed her marketing ploy to where now she carries um, much more higher end uh, orchids, not just the general orchids. And she's getting a very big premium for said orchids. So I have um, not been purchasing as much from her, but luckily there's other people who also now sell the normal more reasonably priced orchids. So not really into that paying 50 bucks a piece for orchids kind of thing. So went ahead, got out there. Um, wife had got off of work before I left, so I headed out that way and ended up buying myself, what the hell would it be? It was like 14 orchids. It was 14 orchids bought from a gentleman. But as I walked around, looked at spots, saw a couple different ones and stuff, different places selling things. And I kind of walked the main body of the flea market and it is going, uh, it's shrinking in size. Because as you get summer heat down here, a lot of the snowbirds go back north. A lot of people don't want to be out there in this heat. So you do have fewer people that show up for said shows. But I walked, I'd say 85% of the thing. Probably 90% of the thing. But there's a few spots I didn't. It's like people are used to setting up. This is the spot I always set up in. And that's where I'm going to set up for the rest of my life. Problem with it is, is you are 200 yards or 300 yards down that lane, down that path. And there's nobody else around except you. So as I kind of look over, I don't see something really kind of catches my eye. I'm not willing to walk four to 600 yards round trip to look at your yard sale looking garbage that's out there that I probably don't want anyway. So that's the case. Um, I wish more, I wish more flea markets in a uh, place like that would notice that happening, the people who are putting them on and go and even educate the vendors of, hey, I know this is a spot you would set up in but we're a much smaller show this time of year yada yada group up you know i'm not saying you all have to be on top of each other but i don't want to walk 200 yards out by yourself like you're just kind of you're defeating your own purpose and making it less likely for me to want to walk out there which in turn makes less sales for you which in turn makes you less likely to come back next year or next month and so on and so forth so it becomes a defeating purpose in that Kind of thing i used to do a flea market that was my business for a while i used to set up and sell antiques and collectibles and all kinds of junk like that and there was big shows i go to that was a friday saturday sunday show and the one in particular up in what year iowa and it was a massive massive event and they let people come in and set up on thursday because the show started on friday and that was great but not every kid there on that so i was able to do it luckily but then they start letting people into shop also on thursday because they charge them extra money and then vendors like well i got to shut up on wednesday so they shut up on wednesday and which is also kind of dumb but it is what it is well now they got people set up on wednesday after a number of years they're letting a few people into shop on wednesday so by the time friday rolls around these people have been here since wednesday set up and selling stuff they're exhausted and they want to, they're done. So by midday Saturday, they're packing on a ship and leaving, which makes Sunday dead, which now makes it really for most people a Friday show. Because Saturday was only a half day for most vendors. And it became a real bad thing that literally was destroying that um, show. Unfortunately, it went downhill pretty quick. So luckily I wasn't in that business that long. That didn't um, hurt me too bad, but it was really annoying. My thing always was why I set up a flea market like that is if you're still here at say, if you're a main booth, I'm not saying you had to have everything out 100%, but like say on a two, three o'clock on Saturday, on Sunday, if your booth still looks like you're open, you're still here doing for business, I will give you 
50% discount on next, you know, show, next year's show, whatever it is. That way encourages people to stay, stick around, and be there the whole time. Because that way, we have a show that actually goes on all three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Stop letting people in the shop on Thursday. That'll help with that also. So stop letting people set up on Tuesday. You know, that kind of stuff. But that is what it is. So went out there, checked it out, and saw virtually nothing I wanted. And I even, like, looked around some of the stuff. Like, even if somebody gave me, like, here's a $1,000. Just go spend away. I couldn't think of anything besides plants. There was a handful of trees and stuff I might have bought. But, um... Aside from plants, I couldn't think of had to spend a thousand dollars on there. Like, there was, and I got to buy like some silver coins or whatever, because they're, you know, I could always go resell them. But nothing I'd want to keep and want to put in my house. Like, it's all just garbage and crap I don't want to mess with. But aside from the plants, went ahead, got done there. From there, I headed on up to um, Daytona area and drove up that way. Ended up um, hitting up Costco, checked out Costco a little bit, and then left Costco, went over to. Um, actually on the way up, I guess, on the way to Costco. Stopped at the um, Jeep dealership up there in Daytona. Looking to see if they had a Jeep like my wife kind of wants. And, of course, they didn't. They had a um, black one that was kind of what we'd want. But had a lot more features we don't need. And, like, $22,000 of the crap we don't need. So I said, hey, can we, can you dealer trade one of these? And stuff and whatnot. And they're like, yeah, probably. Da, da, da. So I looked around. And they had one close. But it was twelve grand more than we really need. But again, not the end of the world. That's a doable price, but not great. But it is what it is. So they talked about that. We didn't really get into it too much because it wasn't only really options I wanted. And I did the build sheet on the um, Jeep website kind of thing. So, And then we kind of chatted a little bit. I headed out from there. I headed on over to Costco. Hit Costco up and mostly hit up Costco because what I really wanted to do, it didn't open until 11. So... I was out too early, but got to Costco, looked around there a little bit, bought my wife another big planter full of plants and whatnot to put on from the house. So she's got 14 orchids and now a giant like planter. It's like almost too hard to carry in the truck with me. Left there, headed over to the Daytona Aquarium and Rainforest exhibit place, whatever it is, and went ahead and my wife had said she wanted it. One of the things she'd get me, it wasn't available. For Christmas, they weren't open yet. A annual membership, and it's only 100 bucks. So it's like 30 to get in the door one day, and then it's 100 bucks for the year. And I thought, well, if I go a fourth time, I save money. But I was like, what the hell? So I bought the thing. I almost asked, hey, can I buy a day pass? And this place doesn't suck. Can I use that day pass price towards the manual, manual membership? And I thought, ah, it's 100 bucks. I'll come enough to make $100 worth. And wish I would have just bought the day pass because. It's kind of lacking. It's much smaller than what they made it, presented it, when they, the advertisement and stuff, and the videos I'd seen, and the people bragging about it, and how great this place is. And it's very well done. It's nice. It's simple. It's just small. I walked the whole thing twice, and I was in there well less than an hour. So I'm like, yeah, okay, that kind of sucks. But yeah. So if you're spending 30 bucks to walk around that thing, and you're less than an hour in there, and you made two laps, it's not the greatest thing but my thought is if i have a pass i'll use it as an excuse basically every time i get up to daytona after um, 11 a.m which isn't that often but when i do i'll just use an excuse to go in there check out the jellyfish see if things changed kind of give it up once through and just hopefully i'll use it eight ten times but i can make it a 20 30 minute loop and that'll be worth my 100 bucks so we'll see how it goes there's no membership cards or nothing they said is give me your name and your email address or phone number or some crap and like they know your picture but they're on the computer and they let me in which felt weird i'm used to everything having some kind of code or something but some kind of card but didn't have that so from there um headed back towards home went down stopped at a little i guess like park area used to be campgrounds and they've turned it out now it's a picnic area um there's a fishing pier and stuff so Went ahead and took my cigar with me, walked back in there, and there's like a lookout tower. I climbed up to the top, smoked my cigar for a little bit there, and then decided to go get my run in while I was there. So I ran around that part of the area for a while, got my run done for the day. Then I headed back up to the lookout tower and finished my cigar, which was funny. Some mid cigar, I'm like running with my cigar in my hand. Probably could have left it like on a log or something, but didn't want to mess with it. So I took my cigar with me. So I'm running with a cigar that's went out as I'm running my mile, like plus there. So. But yeah, got back out, finished my scar, and there I head on home. Kind of chilled out for the day. 
Uh, made it pretty, I got a lot done. It was just a relaxing, not give a shit, didn't have to be anywhere kind of day. Got home and loaded in the truck. Got all the plant stuff put away and whatnot. Got in the house and all that good fun stuff. So, yeah. Wife got home from work and we decided to do a garlic flavored burger that was like a frozen patty that they had found at Aldi a while back. And we had some buns she'd bought recently. So, I wanted to get those used up as well, also. So, I went ahead and knocked those out and they shrunk up a little bit. So, they weren't quite as big as I hoped they'd be, but they're really tasty. I'd eat them again. So, I told them they're not like two bucks a piece, whatever. Yeah, go for it. Like, nice to know it's actually cheaper than buying a hamburger and doing it yourself. So, yeah, I was happy with the flavor. I would eat it again. So, yeah, we knocked that out and then watched the uh, final episode of uh, Physical 100 of uh, season one, even though we watched season two first. Watched season one, saw the winner, and it was a pretty dramatic finish, man. It was a really good, it, the show finished a lot better than it started. The first couple of episodes was all about like influencers and Instagram models and crap. It was like super annoying, but it turned into the show that I actually liked from season two. So definitely, definitely happy with how it turned out. But yeah, I was super excited about that. So it worked really, really well. So yeah, from there, headed back outside, had myself a nice cigar. And again, without any dogs in here, it's so weird. Like, it was so weird not having dogs around. So I'm like, I kept hearing, like, ghost barking. Like that phantom uh, vibration when you think your phone's ringing. I hear, like, barking like, so, what? I'm like, oh, shit, no. I don't have any dogs. So kind of messed my brain a little bit. It is what it is. So, yeah, that's all I got for right now. I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe, wonderful day. Thanks for watching. Oh, yeah, we are going to go. I almost forgot. We are going to go to the comedy club and check it out on Wednesday night show and it started at eight o'clock. Wife had a bunch of um, heart tests with her um, pacemaker stuff and it wore out. So when she got home, she decided she didn't wanna go. So, which was fine, I don't know if it's not a big deal, but I reached out to some of their friends like, hey, I think we're going to this. If you guys wanna tag along. And they're like, well, we'll get back to you. So I reached out to them like, hey, she canceled it, but let me know if you guys go. Like, no, if you had a good time or not. And then they didn't go either, so. But yeah, that's what we had, so. Anyway, that's all for now. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Have yourself a safe, wonderful day. Thanks for watching.